Hello there guys, look at this beast. It's the Hot Wheels Twin Mill. This car is considered common by Forza Horizon 4. It's like, what the fuck? It's not common, it's legendary. Look at it, right? There are none on auction. You can't buy it in the auto showroom and you have to win a series of three races in order to get one. And once you've got one, you're gonna be hanging on to it. So why the hell is this common? It definitely should be legendary. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I do like quirky cars. So before I crack on, I should say that this video is courtesy of Loudmouth. So Loudmouth, with an F, left a comment on one of my videos saying, why don't you do a video showing people how to unlock the twin mill? I didn't know what the twin mill was. So I asked and he told me, told me how to do it. So I've just done it and this is my reward. It's actually really, really easy to unlock, but it is a seasonal event. So you've got to get your ass moving on this one. You've got about four days and I think about 13 hours and counting as I'm making this video in order to be able to get this car. So I'll show you how to get it in just a sec. First of all, I'm gonna show you the spec of the car and all that kind of stuff. And there's a couple of things in here as well that Loudmouth asked me to check out. Now this design is the Hot Wheels 50th anniversary design. This is the one that came with the car. So when I won it, I got this one, but he specifically asked me if it was possible to, to get this design on the car. So I'm guessing that when he won his, he didn't get it. But yeah, this is the one that came with mine. Now what I tried to do, let me just, um, I'll tell you what, I'll quickly explode it so you can have a little look inside. I like that bar in the middle. That, that gold bar thing, that's a bit strange, but I do like it. I, I imagine it supports the roof. It's like, like a roll cage, but a roll platform. I like it. I, the gear stick is weird as hell. I'm not going to get in. I'm not going to be wasting time doing those sort of things. But uh, Yeah, it is a beast. But in this matte black, it looks incredible, doesn't it? And we can also take a little bit of a closer up look at these engines. That's insane. That is a beast. Now, you may or may not have noticed that on this car there are two seats. So you're sitting on one side of the car, on the left. You're not sitting in the middle. And you may have also noticed that there, on the bonnet, is an engine. Actually, I will get in. And when you're sitting here, in cockpit view, that engine is kind of in the way, just a little bit. Now that's kind of annoying because, let's get rid of this UI. That's a little bit annoying because I like this view. This is the view that I use to drive in. That's insane. I like it when a car has handles. There's one for the passenger seat as well. You can't quite see it, but it's exactly the same as this one. If your passenger has got a great big hoofing handle in the car, that kind of is uh, a guarantee that the car drives like a beast. If they need to hang on to something like this, the car is a beast. Right, let's jump out. Go on, jump out. It's not very good at doing this, is it? Get out. <laughs> okay, that's better. Let's implode. Step away from the vehicle. Go on, close up. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. It's my fault. There we go. I do like it in this design. Right, a couple of things that Loudmouth wanted me to check. So I'll do those first, being as it really is his video. Uh, first things first, the... Um, the designs that are available for it. So let's have a quick look at those. Now, in the original design, if I say uh, this, arrays, paint, and decals, it, it stays as this 50th anniversary. So, I mean, I don't know if he had one that had got some design on it. Uh, if, he, if you did, if you, Loudmouth, if you're watching this, I'm guessing you probably will, as you suggested it, then um, if you remove the paint and decals, it's this, this is what you've got, the one where I've got now. So you might wanna try that if you don't have this one. Uh, other designs that are available, uh, if I pop over to um, find new designs, there isn't really the option here to have, um, you know, like uh, manufacturer ones, you can't really do that. I love this, the original Hot Wheels one, the blue one uh, from Long Tall Sally. There are some nice designs in here, to be honest. I think that's my favorite one. I do like this one as well. It's just bloody awesome. I mean, that would work on quite a few cars. Love those color wheels. But on this car in particular, beautiful. So there we go. Um, not so keen on the rest. I think those two, that one, 
I think that's my favorite, to be honest. That one and this one and the design that's on the car now are all spectacular. So yeah, I think I'd probably download that. Anyway, let's uh, pop out of all of this. There isn't really anything else in here that Loudmouth wanted to have a look at. So let's pop into the garage. And uh, first things first, this is the, um, the car spec. It's terrible handling. It's got a 6.6. .6. Now, even if you download a tune, you can't get it much higher. You can get like acceleration up to 10 and launch really high. And handling goes up to about eight at a maximum. Now you can see it's classed as a common, it's only 110,000. I have checked on the auction house, nobody is selling one. You can't buy them uh, from the showroom, so it it's really should be a legendary. But anyway, that's the spec of it when you get it. It's rear wheel drive, it's an S1 class. Uh, other things that you might wanna look at, on the upgrades, if we find a new tune, I mean, look at some of these. This take, all these are taking it up to an S2 class here, but 7.9 handling, 7.3, that one takes it to an eight. Nothing over an eight. So the handling on this is always gonna be a little bit of a bitch. But yeah, they're the tuning options that are out there at the moment. And I'm guessing if we've only got an eight, let's have a look, see if there's any tuners that are people that, oh, there's Long Tool Sally again, look. So Long Tool Sally has not only painted it in a spectacular fashion, but Long Tool Sally has also created uh, some tunes for you to check out. So there, that's the kind of things that you can do with it. Let's get out of that. Uh, what else did I want to show? Uh, oh, yes. Back from this. Oh, yeah, we need to be in there, and we need to be in car mastery. This is a disappointment. As I say, it's common. I really think it should be legendary. I'll just flick through these quickly so you can see what they are. But really standard stuff. Nothing exciting in there at all. So that's a very big disappointment. So time to take it to the streets. So I'm going to be driving it as it was intended. So I'm not, I'm not, I haven't downloaded a tune or anything like that. This is the way I won it. Um, I've changed my controller over to this one, which is uh, option number one, basically so I could do this. It does look good, doesn't it? I really think that those, um, the cables that close to the exhaust manifold I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a beast. I like the cables, they look good. In fact, the whole car looks pretty damn good. The engines look amazing. So we'll drive it for a little bit in this view. Oh, uh, gears are different, aren't they? Okay, there they are. It's not easy to handle at all. It spins all over the place. Earlier on when I was in this, I was in fifth gear and I'd stopped. I right, let me just stop. And I was in fifth, and I hadn't realized I was in fifth, and I went to pull off and it just wheel spun. Look at that, how much power does this car have? All right, let's see if it'll wheel spin off the mark in sixth gear. I'm guessing it probably will. Let me just go this direction. Uphill, sixth gear, from a standing start. Oh, it didn't wheel spin. <laughs> Standing start, uphill. Oh, I've gone into first. Oh, there we go, five. Look at that, wheel spin in your car, uphill from a standing start in fifth gear. That's insane, there's a lot of power in this beast of a machine. So yeah, it does have a little bit of a problem if you're using the view, uh, my, oh, I keep doing the wrong thing because I'm in a different setup. Yeah, that's slightly, slightly in the way, that engine there. So. <laughs> I can't imagine this car would really go into mass production. I think there might be a few accidents if you was to buy this machine like this. Jesus, it's hard to control, it really is. I do think uh, I'm gonna have to download a tune to get the handling up a little bit or maybe even try and tune it myself. So let's take a look at how we get it. Right, jump into your world map. I'm gonna be turning everything off and I'm just gonna be going on the seasonal events. And this one down here, it won't be white for you, it'll be red. Uh, there'll be a red one here, and when you start it, this will turn white, and she'll also pop a couple more on the map, which will appear. So this one, and this one. All of these are retro supercar events, and all you need to do is to rank first in the leaderboards after completing all three races 
on, um, I think it's called Above, Above Expert or something. So I'll look at my difficulty settings. Highly skilled, sorry, above expert. That doesn't exist. Above average, expert. <laughs> yeah, in between those two, so I was kind of there. So if you're on highly skilled or higher, and you rank first after completing those three races in the leaderboards, you'll get this car. If you are on expert, you'll get this car and a horn as well. Uh, also, but for both of those, you also get some money. And if you're on just above average, you only get the money. So if you pop it onto expert, you're going to get the money, the car, and the horn. You get all three, but you only need to be on highly skilled. So highly skilled is quite easy. Uh, so you're going to be able to do this without any problems. So let's teleport down there. I could have driven there, couldn't I? It's not very far. So yeah, it's just down by the Colossus. It will be red on your map until you go in there and start the event. And then those three, uh, three things will appear. But as I say, it's got to be a, a retro uh, supercar. And if I flip this over, it tells you a little bit about the, um, the races. So we've got the Cotswold Super Sprint. Uh, we've also got the Moorhead Wind Farm Circuit. Three laps of that. It's very easy to win that one because you can kind of wall ride one of the corners. And the Meadow Sprint. Now for me, on the Cotswolds one, I did have to do a rewind uh, because I messed up a corner near the end of the race um, and that lost my position from first to second. So I rewound and then I got back into first. I got an easy first on the, um, the Moorhead one. And in the Meadow Sprint, I came in second and I kind of did on purpose because I wanted to make sure that if I didn't get first on all of them, I'd be okay at winning the car. Now, obviously you are because you still come first on the leaderboard. So you don't have to worry about getting first on all of them. But you can see here the prizes look. Um, the horn that you can get is in the Hall of the Mountain King. I'm not going to use that, so I've only really done this on highly skilled. I'm not interested in doing it on expert. So if I pop into this event, you'll see which cars you can use. So um, I'll pop on buy cars, and then you can see all the options available. So here we go. I, I quite like the look of this. I think I might buy it and check it out. So we can use the Testarossa Ferrari, which I thought was uh, nice, because that's nice to drive. I used the um, Maserati, the MT12. Uh, this is also a nice car, but I don't have it on this account. Now here we can see why I called the Lotus Esprit the Lamborghini Countach or Countach. Um, they're so similar, but yeah, how idiotic of me. Spending ages talking about this car on another video and calling it this one. Never mind. I expected a few more comments on this one, uh, on that video telling me that I was a fool. So I used that on an S1 class and it was easy to win. The F1, you can use those, they're a good option. Um, I think the uh, MC12 was the best car I have for doing this race. So those are the car options that you can use. Uh, as soon as you've done all three races, as long as you are ranked first, you are going to win this car. You've got to be uh, highly skilled or above. though. So there we go, guys. That's pretty much all I've got to say about it. It is quite easy. Let's get back out. That engine's just so stupid being in the way like that. Um, actually, there was a, one other question that... Um, that Loudmouth asked me. So I'm just gonna jump into the auction house to answer that question and then we're done. I didn't really have Hot Wheels when I was young. I had Scale X Trick and um, actually when me and my brother were very young, we got a Scale X Trick set for Christmas and my parents had put it underneath their bed already wrapped up leading up to Christmas to hide it from us. I need to change my car so I'll do that while I'm telling the story. Uh, so yeah, they'd hidden the, uh, the Scale Electric set under their bed and it was wrapped up. So every day when they went to work, we got this Scale Electric set out. We carefully unwrapped it and then we set it all up in the living room and we played on it and played on it. And then before they got home from work, we wrapped it all back up and put it under the bed. We did this for about a month leading up to Christmas. And then a few days before Christmas, we were racing on it while they were at work and the adapter for the plug that was in the wall melted. It got so hot, the plug melted. It was like, what are we going to do? So we just put it all back in the box anyway, wrapped it up, put it under the bed. And on Christmas Day when we opened it, we was like, Mom, look at this. <laughs> and they took it back to the shop and complained. But, um, yeah, we used it to death. It was amazing. I loved that. And, I mean, when I was growing up then in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, so all the Formula One cars on the Scale X Street set was all the 1970s ones. So I absolutely love those cars on the, um, when you get them on Forza. So, whoops, jumping all over the place. So yeah, what uh, Loudmouth asked me to do was to check out the auction prices. 
So it's not very high. Uh, the highest you can pop on starting price, 110. Highest sell it, yeah, that's it, 121. It's crazy. So 121,000 is just such a low amount. And nobody has them on auction. Well, they didn't when I checked before, but I'll just check again. Hot Wheels. In the tradition of telling you stories, before I close off my video, I'll tell you another little Christmas one. Look, nobody's selling one. Why isn't it legendary? Uh, aside of that, uh, Christmases, I was the youngest uh, of three children. So on Christmas morning, my brother would say, you wait here, I'll go downstairs and make sure it's all safe. And I'd sit upstairs waiting for him to call me down and, and you know, kind of let me know my parents had gone to bed and it was safe to go down and have the presents. Well, that's what I thought he was doing. What he was actually doing is unwrapping everything, deciding which presents he wanted, and then wrapping up all the ones he didn't want and putting my name tag on them. So every Christmas morning for several years, my brother went downstairs, opened his presents and my presents, chose the best ones, wrapped up the shitty ones, like all the itchy, woolly jumpers from aunties and things like that, and put a name tag on, and he just got loads of cool stuff. Now, I, he told me later on in life that he'd done this. That's how I found out. But my parents had no idea because they just saw us playing with stuff and arguing as kids did. So they didn't notice that all the stuff they had bought for me, my brother uh, and me, uh, both acted as though it was his, because I thought it was his, and he was pretending it was his. So, there you go. That was my childhood Christmases. That's what you get for being the youngest in a family by a few years. Your brother steals all your good Christmas presents. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but there we go. He was in a bigger school than me, so I got to be at home a lot more than he did, and I played with what I thought were his toys when he wasn't there, and I thought I was getting away with it and being quite cheeky, whereas really they were actually meant for me in the first place. But there's a couple of Christmas stories for you. It is getting a little bit close to Christmas. There's a lot of Christmas stuff in the shops. So it's, it's in time. Right, before we uh, log off, I've showed you everything I needed to show you about the car. I answered a couple of questions that uh, Loudmouth, with an F, asked me to check out. So that's everything we needed to do. I'm just going to very quickly jump in the map and tell you how long you've got. Four days and 13 hours. So get a shift on if you want this car. I don't think there's going to be much other options of getting it. People aren't selling them. They're not available in the showroom. You've got to do this race. And you've got to rank first in highly skilled or above. And if you want to go for expert, you're also going to get a horn. <laughs> oh, how exciting. I think they've got that the wrong way around. They've probably called that horn legendary. Ugh, this game is nuts. So if you do it in unbeatable, you get a pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wouldn't have surprised me if they'd have done that. Or a ridiculous clip-on moustache that nobody is going to wear ever, ever, ever. Well, there we go. So that's it all. That's all from me, guys. Leave some comments. If you enjoyed this, leave a like. I'm guessing as this has been available for a while, this certainly isn't going to be the first video on YouTube that tells you how to do this. I've not looked for any other ones. I just got a message in the comments saying, why don't you? So I did. So that's where it's come from. I hope you enjoy it. You take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.